So beyond the fact that it's Inauguration Day, it's also MLK Day. Um, and speaking about Martin Luther King Day, we're here with Melanie Campbell from the National Associate, the National Coalition of Black Civic Participation. I got it. Woo! Long name. Hard <laughs> so, work. When you tie in the fact that it's MLK Day, he swear, he's being sworn in the MLK Bible, African American president, and we saw a remarkable black turnout again, blacks being engaged in the civic process. What do you got to say today? Uh, it's awesome, and I, I feel like a lot of my life has come full circle in this work. I spent 17 years in Atlanta, where I worked very closely at the King Center with Mrs. King and Dr. Laurie and all these folks, and to be able to see um, this, it's like really like a, a combination of generations coming together. Uh, those who were the, were the civil rights generation to those who are in this new millennium generation coming together for moving the country forward in a positive manner. It's just a blessing. The warmth that you feel, you know, the temperature is not affecting the energy that's here and the sense of not just hope, but this time it's hope and determination to get it done this time. So we know it's going to be much more, uh, even with some of the things that are going on where folks don't want to work together, the people will make, push our folks to work together. So if, I'm feeling really good today. I love that determination. Now, a lot of people have made the argument that now that this president, the president's won his second term, the African American vote's not going to come out again. The civic participation is going to go down. What do you say to that? Uh, that's not true. I mean, if you look at this, the data, and nobody has time for a lot of that, but uh, the African American vote has been going up steadily for uh, over a decade, especially because of black youth and black women. And so, young people are uh, very much uh, been tuning in for at least since 1992. And if you look at those numbers. No, and I believe that they're tuned in and they're going to be consistent voters moving forward. It's just we have to stay engaged and make sure folks uh, see some results out of voting. And so that's the continuum. But how do we keep them engaged? Working on public policy, making sure that the issues that they care about, they're able to tune in and be involved and stay active. And so we have something called Black You Vote with my organization. They're working now to, to do a what's next uh, policy, youth policy and process, engaging young people to engage the administration, to engage Congress. And not just that, because there's a lot of work in the states. So they're working on making sure we can uh, protect our voting rights because we saw what happened this election, right? And so we know we have to continue that fight. Uh, uh, in states that are still trying to, the Supreme Court is going to be looking at the Voting Rights Act uh, very, very soon. So we have a lot more work to do. It's a, it's a lifelong process, engagement, you know. I, I hear you, and I, and I think one thing we've seen from a lot of the GOP is now pushing for states to allocate electoral votes by congressional district and not by a winner-take-all. In that effect, to sort of suppress the vote and take away the meaning of the vote for so many African Americans and minorities out there, will your organization be involved in stopping that pressure? I think, I think part of what we have to do is make sure that um, we stay involved in the voting voting rights from, from, from that to across the board, uh, not worked heavily on this issue. It's kind of bubbling up as some new thing. Um, and I think the, and as long as the people know what's going on, we have the ability to push back on elected officials to say, no, not on our watch. And so that's what you saw in the election. People stood in those lines because we knew we knew what was up. And so we stood in the line, we knew what the vote was about, and we knew we had to stand up, and we had to do it. I have a one-year-old nephew and a four-month-old uh, little niece. We all have to stand up, not just for those of us who are right here now, but those who are depending on us to make sure they have that opportunity uh, for good quality of life in this country. Paying it forward here on the National Mall with Melanie Campbell. We appreciate you so much, and enjoy the, enjoy the president's I'm speech wonder, today. It's wonderful. <laughs> blessed to be here. Thank you. Thank you.